18. It is true or false. Believers uh, should read devotionals and extra scriptural books. Well, actually, I should rephrase it as a true false. Um, uh, well, it's a, the original question was, should believers read devotionals and extra scriptural books or just stick to the Bible? So, uh, someone want to rephrase that as a true false? Go ahead. Okay, well, okay. I'll just say, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just phrase it as true or false. True or false, believers should read devotionals and extra scriptural books rather than just stick to the Bible. And I'll post that in chat now. Well, I can go first. I, I, you've heard me talk about this quite a bit in other programs. Uh, um, I think, of course, uh, we, we have to use the scriptures uh, uh, primarily. Uh, and and <clears throat> first of all, first and foremost, the scriptures, and then everything else we really need, we need to be tested. Uh, does it agree with the scriptures or not? But once that is being done, I do think it can be helpful to many people. I know Ben has talked about a lot of extra biblical reading that he's done. I've done the same thing. I, I've read, uh, you know, um, oh, let's say uh, books where uh, theologians are teaching. Uh, others where they're like a message is taught, but through a, a format of a novel, uh, uh, a, a Bible um, um, what they, uh, commentaries. Uh, yeah, I, I've I've spent a lot of time reading extra biblical things. I remember one time I was criticized by a friend of mine that he, he he came to my home for my home Bible study, and we worked together. And one day I was on a break, and he says he saw I was reading, and he expected it was the Bible. He was surprised. We're not reading the Bible. What are you reading? And I told him I think it was Fox the Book of Martyrs actually, uh, but. Uh, he was all disturbed and reprimanded me. Now, you should just read the Bible, nothing but the Bible. But the way I look at it is, um, if uh, let's say that um, Angel, uh, she explains something to us tonight and uh, gives her thoughts on a scripture, um, we, we wouldn't argue that, we, hey, don't listen to her because it, her words are not scripture. Um, um, We'd, we'd all accept that, wait, maybe she has something we can learn from her. Uh, but what if Angel took that same message and wrote it down in a book? Uh, according to my friend, if, if it's in a book, you shouldn't read it. It's only read the Bible. So that would mean that all of the, the people who maybe have been even great theologians who, who, who have a, great, a lot to offer us, and if they were joining us tonight in this conversation, we would value it. But does that mean that if it's written down in a book format, we have to reject what's said because it's in a book? I thought the whole argument my friend had was really quite absurd. Um, but I do think that uh, as long as you are uh, familiar with the scriptures first, uh, and then you also use the scriptures as a test, uh, to see if the other things you're reading are in agreement, uh, then then it can be hopeful. But uh, if you're not using the scriptures as, as a test, and uh, then uh, I would discourage you from from trying to get your truth from extra biblical writings. <clears throat> uh, who wants to go next? I'll go. Um, you know, I, I mentioned even earlier tonight that I was raised a Jehovah's Witness, so. Um, Part of the teaching that Jehovah's Witnesses very strictly follow is that you are not supposed to do your own research at all. Um, and that includes going to the Bible by yourself. You're only supposed to use their magazines and their publications that they've written. So because of that, I research everything. Um, and I have I have had... I've gone through um, my time where I I was coming out of the Jehovah's Witnesses and trying to figure out, okay, so what do I believe and kind of trying to swim through what preachers were telling me. And, you know, I kind of got a little bit confused. And to be honest, I stayed a little bit confused for quite a while. 
But it wasn't until I decided that, okay, I need to figure this out on my own. I need to do some research. I need to study it. I need to dig in. Um, and then ended up finding Renee and um, learning so much from her and then finding this uh, this Church of the Eternally Secure and learning so much here and actually learning how to study, how to dig in, making sure that I'm reading in context when I'm reading the Bible, but then also doing um listening to sermons and and reading other books reading um pieces of the bible that might not be in the bible anymore um that have been removed for certain reasons um yes i i say absolutely research it study it but as brother luke said test everything against the bible if it doesn't line up with the word of god then it's not right and you need to walk away from it. And I've, I've actually had to, over my time, my, my short years of, of seeking the truth, I've actually had to walk away from many YouTube ministries and I've had to walk away from specific books because I've seen that the, the what they're saying does not line up with scripture. So yeah, absolutely. I say, I say, as long as you've got a good base and you know what the scripture says and you're not afraid to compare it, then yes, absolutely. Do some research. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. Uh, let me, that was, none of us wrote the question, so it doesn't matter who was last here. And who, who wants to go next? I could go uh, next. Sorry, the baby is sick, so I, I had to actually come get her in the bath because when she's sick, she wants mommy, not daddy. So, um, so sorry for any disruption. I didn't actually hear the way the question was phrased, like whether I should be answering true or false. But I will say, um, I haven't yet had time to actually read anything in addition to scripture. I'm still fine to ask you. One day I may do that. I, I think though that what Heather said really covers it. I mean, it's, you know, if, if, <laughs> if the first time you come across an idea that is contrary to what you thought you understood from scripture is in a, um, you know, an extra biblical text, because, you know, something that's, you know, they say or they claim was supposed to be canon, or if they, if it's something that, um, you know, just a regular old person wrote, um, you know, definitely, uh, definitely go back to scripture and consult. And, and you know, don't, don't, uh, don't ever trust the word of man. Um, and you know, anywhere near the way you trust the word of God. Uh, obviously, things give you into a different understanding. And you know, if you find a way where that actually drives the scripture, then then great. But um, uh, for me, um, I feel like a lot of those texts will be more helpful maybe in understanding stuff that like maybe eschatology or certain like specific subjects that are not really salvific um that maybe i don't i don't have a total grasp on at the moment um and i think certainly some extra biblical texts would be great for leading people to faith to explaining things to them in a way that they oh, sorry she almost fell. Um, explaining things to people in a way that they haven't uh, considered might open their mind or, or, or um, overcome some mental blocks for them. But uh, I think it's ridiculous to say that, you know, avoid them at all costs. And uh, uh, I don't really know whether I'm supposed to be saying true or false because I didn't hear the way the question was phrased, but, uh, but that, that, that's about uh, all I got on that. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, Brother Steve, what do you say? Oh, there we are. Sorry, I had my mic up. I'm eating my dinner. And second of all, I didn't even realize I was in a, I forgot I was a different in a different time zone. <laughs> That's partly why I was so late. I didn't realize it's almost, it was almost 11, not almost 10 when I signed in. So, uh, Were my parents wrong for buying me the children's Bible when I was 
seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. And was I was that wrong for me to read that as many times as I did? No. And uh, along with that, basically, what Luke said, what Heather said, what Angel said, Luke especially, I mean, you like said almost word for word some of the points I've said for a long time. And it starts out with the fact, for me, the fact that, yes, we have the King James. And it's a great English version, one of the best English versions we have, one of the most literal versions we have. We have several versions, but they're not the original scripture. I can't read Hebrew. I can't read Greek. So there are a lot of helps to understanding the the scripture we can read. Um, and with that in mind, there's there's all kinds of things that you can use that are designed and geared to help you study the Bible to understand what it says and the and even the deeper truths and meanings and things and you know uh, even now sometimes I have I have trouble with the King James because I know. You know, it was written in 16 or published in 1611. And though it's the same English words a lot of times, many of the words in there, which is why we have Webster's Dictionary, the original purpose of the of the 1800 something Webster Dictionary was to define the uh, words from scripture. Um, and many of those words have changed in meaning from then until now. So that's also why I like to read a more modern translation a lot of times, especially when I was younger, because it was easier for me to get a grasp of the context and not and, and you know some specific verses, but I also like to read parallel Bibles where you had at least two, sometimes four translations side by side. You know, like with what Luke said, when we talk about an idea that we or, or a thought we have or something that we feel revealed to us from Scripture, we're doing exactly what someone does when they write a translation of scripture or write a book, as he said, the amplified Bible is a perfect example of what we do. Uh, especially what, what you guys do on Wednesday night and sometimes on Sunday and sometimes even tonight on Friday nights, we amplify scripture when, when we, especially when we discuss specific scriptures uh, and and we we p we pick apart the words and and study it out and tell each other what we think about a specific verse or two, and we could you know you, we could spend two hours two to three hours on three or four verses. That's what we're doing. We are in effect speaking a book that people are hearing though not published. And if we can't read extra biblical books, whether it's about the Bible or whatnot, then we should never do a teaching. We should never do a Bible study. We should never look at anything other than the exact words of scripture and just memorize them. But that's not what scripture tells us to do. We're supposed to study this stuff out and look and look and deeper more than memorization. Memorization is fine, but if you don't learn of it and apply it, then what good are we doing? So uh, I think that's, that's, I mean, you know, that's basically my, my point at the end of the day is, 
if we can't read stuff outside of scripture, we should stop listening to each other. And that's clearly wrong according to scripture. So thanks. Okay. Thank you, brother. All right, Sister Lisa. Yeah, I don't have a problem. I mean, I don't think that's any different than the Bible commentaries that they have, um, who have, which have existed throughout the ages. But you just need to make sure that you're filtering it correctly through the Word of God and being led by the Spirit when you're looking at those things because, you know, men can make mistakes and men can make errors, you know, and ha and then do. So, you know, I don't have a problem with that. You can you can see God in many different things. I've I've uh, seen testimonies where people were into, you know, either uh, Hindu religion or various other religions, and yet they knew <laughs> in their heart that they they had no experience of God in that that it was dead and the lord began to call to them and even revealed himself to them even though they didn't know the scripture at all and they were able to discern that uh, there was something different when they picked up the bible and read it for the first time so you know um uh, i don't i don't have a, a a problem with that uh you can you can see god god can call to you and use the darkness that a person is, is in to reveal to them that he is the light by showing them how much darkness they're actually in. So, you know, there, there are people who have been in extreme darkness, former Satanists and stuff like that, and the Lord has revealed himself to them and even used the words that they have learned in their wickedness to reveal his truth and to show them why that stuff is false. So, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it. Like you said, I think everybody said it, you know, perfectly that, um, the light, the light of Christ can shine through the darkness wherever the person is at, but we need to filter all things through the word of the living God. And as we've always said that, uh, the word is our go-to in all matters of faith and practice. And that's what we, uh, filter things through, but cause we've seen people take the Bible itself and twist it and turn it into something other than what the Lord intended and make whole doctrines that are false out of the scriptures themselves. Oh, woo, I tremble for them folk, but just saying, uh, you know, so it's the letter of this word is not the spirit of this word. So if a person is not born of the spirit, you know, they can use the Bible and do evil if that's what is in their heart. So, you know, that's why we have to be led by the spirit of truth. When Jesus shows, but when the spirit of truth has come, he was going to lead us and guide us into all truth. And that's why it's so important that a person be born of the spirit, because just being religious is not enough. There's a whole lot of folk that's religious and seemingly righteous, but their godliness is not. They're not born of the spirit. They're not sealed by the spirit. They've not been washed in the blood of the lamb. So even though they have a form of godliness, they deny the power. What is the power? For the it, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. And they deny the gospel, so they deny the truth, they deny the Lord, and they're not regenerated, even though they're religious, even though they have a period uh, uh, a appearance of of piety and sanctity, that they, they're not born of his spirit. And and a sister. Heather would say, we, we could say, you know, so Jehovah Witnesses are probably some people that are that conduct themselves, you know, in a very godly manner. Yet the only ones that get saved are the ones that call on Jesus and come to faith in Christ. So, you know, it's it's not it's that is not the, the test. And we see now that there there are what I call Christianos, Christians in name only, that. They're not born of his spirit. They're not sealed by the spirit. They've not been washed in the blood of the lamb. They're going by their own self-righteousness. And they're reading these scriptures and saying, I can do that. And I can do this. And I can do that. And they're trying to do it in their own spirit. And you see the result. When people try to do that, they end up shipwrecked. And that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Because the Lord is trying to bring them to an end of self. <laughs> you know, so uh, I, I, I'm not trying to be funny but i'll have sympathy for them because that's the journey they have to go to they need to crash 
something. <laughs> and when they crash, that's when they're going to cry out. Well, who can do this? Who then could be saved? Now he's got your attention. Now he can speak to you because before you were trying to operate in self and you can't hear him. You know, uh, ego, as, I, as I've heard one preacher say, is an acronym for edging God out. And that's what people do. If you put ego in the way between you and God, you got to, you got to, that ego got to go. Because the whole point of our walk with Christ is actually dying to self. We get stronger in Christ by growing weaker in self. And our reliance is not on self, our reliance is on him. Our reliance is on the Lord. And that's the same thing with the scriptures. You know, we get into scriptures, there's time I've hit difficult passage. And I'll say, Lord, you know, what does this mean? I want to understand. Now, I could turn to a commentary and read it. And maybe that'll bear witness with my spirit. Maybe not. I'll be like, no, yeah, I don't think that's right. Okay, so I'll trust the Lord. You'll reveal it to me in due season. Maybe this ain't the time for me to know. And I'll put it on the shelf. And sometimes y'all just have to be patient. Understand you want to know, but, you know, patience is a virtue the Lord will bring out in you as you grow in him. Your, your patience is going to be tested. That's just a part of being in the faith, is trusting in the Lord. And when he gets quiet, you know, that uh, that he's working for you. Even though you don't see it, he's still working. And you're just going to have faith. You have to have faith that he's working on your behalf. So that's when it, it's just time to just trust and rely on him. And that's when you're getting to know him and his character and his nature and how he operates, which is nothing like us. <laughs> and, and then relying on him when he gets quiet. That's when it's difficult. But know that he's there. Know that he's working. Just because you don't necessarily, quote unquote, see it doesn't mean that that hidden hand that we don't see is an operation and full operation on your behalf. There's times that the Lord is working mightily on your behalf and you don't see anything. You think nothing's going on and he's working mightily behind the scenes. So just trust him. Lord, I thank you. And I know you're there. And even though I may not feel your presence, I know you're there. You say you're with me. You never leave me. You never forsake me. I'm telling you, you start talking and you start preaching, you can preach yourself happy. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself, beloved, if there's no fellowship you can link into and there's nobody you can pick up the phone and talk to at that moment, preach to yourself. Get that Bible open and preach to yourself and put yourself in remembrance of what the scripture says. Those are your promises. Those are your guarantees in the faith. So uh, I think that what the question was, was can you learn from other things that are extra biblical text? Sure you can, but you have to be careful. You need to be cautious. Not everybody... Uh, is necessarily connected to the spirit of the Lord. So you got to filter that through not only the Holy Spirit, but also his word and be led by the spirit. And if you get that, as I call it, a check in your spirit to leave something alone, leave it alone. And if something seems difficult, then maybe you need to press in because the truth is usually deeper than the cursory thing that you've discovered. And you shouldn't be afraid. If it's the Lord, you don't have to be afraid. Press in to get at the truth. That's all I have to say. Mm-hmm. Amen. Wow. You got a lot of amens for me. Uh, sister, you even started preaching a bit. I expect you to say, careful, the Lord ain't playing. Right, sister? The Lord ain't playing. <laughs> yes, no, it's serious. He's serious business. Now, he, he don't yeah. have no problem with us fellowshipping and and having fun and, and 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 that's a blessed thing too. But no, God is serious business. This is this is life and death. Everything that we're talking about tonight, Sister Angel, Brother Ben, Steve, Sister Heather, myself, we discovered you, Brother Luke, we discovered the light of Christ to be saved, to be delivered from the wrath to come. Uh, and the wrath of his judgment, it, that's not what he wanted for us. You know, the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, and Jesus is on a search and rescue mission, not a search and destroy mission. So this is serious business. But we do, as believers, fellowship and laugh and, and, and enjoy uh, uh, the company of one another with with some humor. But no, it is serious. It is serious business. Yeah. Well, I uh, before we get Brother Ben's answer, uh, uh, I want to say that we, everybody's probably aware that we uh, have this uh, uh, on the video that as it's streaming, and as you, we have these what we call truisms. 
uh, like just short sayings that I think are all very profound and true. Uh, and a number of those truisms I, I first heard from Sister Lisa. I don't know how she came up with them or maybe she learned them and repeated them, but I, a number of them I got from her. And I think we got another one tonight. Ben, we might have to add this. We'll have to see if we can add this. Uh, ego, edging God out. I love that. Um, okay, Brother Ben, uh, you didn't answer yet, did you? No, no, I like that one too. Um, yeah, I, I, so there's kind of two parts to this question. You know, one is uh, extra biblical text, and then one is devotionals. I'll take each one individually. Uh, with regards to extra biblical texts, um, you know, uh, I, I know I've been criticized in the past that because I mentioned I like to read other other books from other sound teachers. Uh, and people would say to me, oh, see, you know, there's something wrong with you because don't you know, First John says that you have no need that anyone should teach you. And I, again, taking that, they, they take that verse way out of context. Uh, and even that, if they if they read it the way that they think it means, it could contradicts other scriptures. So, uh, I, I believe when that, when John said that, uh, you know, you have no need that anyone should teach you, he's, uh, you know, if, if he was teaching that, if he truly meant that no man, he, they have no no need for any man to teach them. Well, then there would no been no need uh, for any book of the Bible except for a gospel message. And once you believe that, then you have the Holy Spirit to teach you everything else that you could possibly know need to know. And again, I don't think that's what that Bible teaching uh, that verse is about at all. Uh, there would be no need for the epistles if that were true. So um, I, I believe what that verse is teaching again in context. Is that First uh, John is about Gnosticism, and again, Gnosticism, Gnostic means knowledge, Gnosis means knowledge, and uh, particularly secret knowledge. Uh, so they they essentially believe their salvation was through secret now secret knowledge, and I believe what First uh, John was saying there is to again to refute the Gnostics that were coming in and denying the deity of Christ, the incarnation of Christ, etc. They, they was basically saying, you know, one of the common themes you see off of 1 John, you see, he says like four or five times that uh, everything I'm teaching, everything I'm saying is is that which you heard from the beginning. So you already have uh, the apostles and, uh, to, and the Holy Spirit was working for the apostles and you have all that, everything you need to know to, to stay in sound doctrine and to abide in Christ. There, you don't need to know, there's nothing new. That, that's what the Gnostics believed. There was something. There was something new to learn. More, more knowledge that would further deliver you, or uh, you know, uh, better you. And uh, again, first, first John is saying no. Which you heard from the beginning. If you look at that phrase, heard from the beginning, it says it like four or five times in his epistle. And that's what he's saying is that no, you don't need to run ahead uh, to these Gnostics. They use the word run ahead. You don't need to run ahead to these Gnostics and to what they're teaching as if they have some new secret knowledge. No, you have everything already. Um, and so I think he's basically saying you're not, we're not at the mercy of, of the teaching of man. You already, you already have every, uh, all the knowledge to abide in Christ and, uh, live a successful Christian life. The, these people don't have anything new to teach you. Um, and again, you have the spirit to discern the truth from the error. Uh, and, and, and again, I, I believe good teaching can accelerate your learning and growth. And I think that's exactly why God gives good teachers. Uh, in fact, it even says, I think it's in Romans 12, and there's other passages too, is that God gave evangelists, teachers, um, apostles, etc. He gave God gave good teachers. And I know for a fact that one of the first prayers I got <laughs> that was overwhelmingly uh, confirmed that it was from God is that I believe he did send me good teachers um, because I was uh, wailing and uh, about, flailing about, trying to understand uh, all these different doctrines, you know, uh, grace versus law, where do they fit in, is there a balance, lordship, you know, all this stuff was just, I, I couldn't make sense, it was just drinking from a fire hose, and I prayed God in earnestly um, to to send me good teachers, and that's not exactly what he's done, and in fact, he overwhelmed me with it, I have such good stuff to go through, I haven't gone yet gone through all of it, and I, I continue to learn from other people. And I take what they, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that. Every, anyone, 100%, not, there's not a single person I do. Um, but I'll, I'll learn from certain people, or learn certain things, and I'll, I'll connect dots that maybe they haven't connected and come up with a more, a more fuller understanding. Um, so again, uh, 
again, uh, I, I think it, uh, yes, there's nothing wrong whatsoever from learning from other believers and from good teachers. God sent us good teachers. Uh, but I also believe he gave us the discernment to know who's a good teacher and who's not. Um, with regards to devotionals, I, I'm not a fan of them, honestly. Um, because, uh, I, I, well, for example, like the Catholic Church, I, I know they're great, big into devotionals. But it, to me, it's almost a way of distancing you from God. Like, you, like as if you have to use some kind of formula or certain phraseology before God will hear you. Um, and it's almost like taking your heart out of your conversation with God. God wants to hear your heart. He, he wants you to foist your, your cares on him. Um, and uh, a devotional, it's, again, it's very formulaic. It's using someone else's words to talk to God. I'm not saying you're 100% wrong. If you don't, you, I just think that God rather hear from your heart. He'd rather hear directly what you're feeling, even if you don't know what words to use. In fact, that's what Romans says is that, you know, uh, that the help, the spirit helps in our weakness and that we don't always know what we should pray, but the spirit makes intercession for us, uh, in words that, that can't be uttered. So even though we might not have the exact words, God knows the spirit behind it. And, uh, and the spirit kind of fills in the blanks and makes a, a very clear message to God, what we need. Um, and so for that reason, I'm, again, I'm not a big fan of devotionals. Uh, I just think that it's a way of distancing from people from God in some respects, or it can be at least. Because uh, I know, I, again, when I was a young kid, I used to go to, my, my parents used to send me to, I think it's called a catechism, where like once a week I would go to, after school to learn Catholic doctrine, and they were big into devotionals. And even then I just never felt like it, it felt like I was distancing from God. Like I couldn't talk to God uh, myself. Uh, you know, my words weren't good enough. My heart wasn't good enough. Uh, I had to use someone else's words to, before he would uh, hear my prayer. So, I don't know if anyone else feels similarly, but that's my initial take. Well, I never thought of that before, Ben, but I think that's a very uh, valid point, profound. Uh, there were a lot of really good comments uh, as we've been talking in the chat room. There's a couple that I want to just mention, but... There were so many, uh, we could spend a lot of time on this, but let me see a couple that I've, let me see if I, I highlighted it. I hope I didn't lose it now. Let me see. Where is it? Wow. Uh, well, yeah. Hend Hendrick said something about, uh, oh yeah, no. That's, he said that uh, we, we could, uh, use extra biblicals, it, sh it could be helpful, but it should not be a replacement for the scriptures. And that was very, very, very true. Uh, I know Kevin said something too that I liked a lot, but I've gone it. When I highlight it, it's supposed to stay like that until so I can find it easily. But yeah, uh, the, the the chat room has a lot of good thoughts that uh, they're they're sharing with with us. So pay attention to that. Sorry that I can't find it, find it now. Um, all right, uh, uh, any follow-up uh, to this? Uh, we've been pretty thorough. Uh, how many